Hey gang, it's JC, and this is the resumed and refurbished and new and improved Daily Dose. We're back here on the 3rd of January, 2011, a cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. And uh, all the usual features, everything that we uh, did for the last uh, eight or nine months leading up to the holidays, where I took a little time off to sort of work on the show and uh, sort of fine-tune everything. Uh, everything's back up, and we're rolling again, and we will be here every day, Monday through Friday. We usually post uh, in the very early afternoon, 12, 1 o'clock. Lots of features and goodies and things like that. And, of course, we are on the air every day on the Big 550 KTRS from 10 in the morning until 1 with Trish Gazelle. A week from today, by the way, in the noon hour, we will resume with Trish's Trash. This was an incredibly popular feature when she was on the River and a couple of other radio stations in St. Louis. So Trish's Trash coming back to the airwaves beginning a week from today. Uh, yeah, a week from today uh, in the noon hour on the Big 550 KTRS. Speaking of features, we have an expanded eye candy for you today. We have a picture of Governor Jay Nixon, and you'll just have to look at it for the reason why. I mean, normally, put a picture of the governor up, why would that be a big deal? You get to see that. You know, um, arguably, Katy Perry, regardless of what you think about her or who she married or her music, for that matter, regardless of any of that stuff, or as they say here in Missouri, uh, irregardless, which is not a word, um, you know, Katy Perry, pretty nice to look at, let's face it. So what happens? Her goofy husband, Russell Brand, snapshots a picture of her without any makeup on and then puts it on the Internet. She saw it and was like, what are you doing? Are you nuts? And she made him take it down, but not before we got our hands on it. So we have that picture up for you here today on Eye Candy. And uh, finally, we have a picture of country uh, western singer Leanne. They don't say western anymore. It's like Sears and Roebuck. What happened to Roebuck? Uh, so country and western, western one away. Country singer Leanne Rhymes. Uh, sleazy, you know, just like, uh, you know, dumped her husband for some guy and all this sort of stuff. So anyhow, she's on the beach last July and somebody takes a picture and there she is with the little mosquito bites there, one, one there and one there. And, uh, and now a picture of her last week on the beach in Mexico. Somebody had a boob job. So you can see those pictures today on the eye candy feature here at JCM Line. Com. All right, <sighs> let's talk about this Rams situation. Okay, a couple of things. First of all, the play calling was just bizarre. So that's number one. I mean, we had a, we had a situation. Everybody and their brother knew that the trick to winning this game, or at least to being in a position to win the game, would be to survive the hysteria and the crowd noise and just the hoop-de-doo that goes on in that ballpark in Seattle, particularly in the first quarter. So the Rams have like a third and one. They're deep in their own zone. And they hand off to a guy that I didn't, I'm not even sure I knew was on the team. I think somebody said he had four carries the entire year. What are you doing? What are you doing? It just doesn't make any sense. Steven Jackson, only four, I'm sorry, seven carries in the first half, 11 for the entire game. Denario Alexander, who was exciting to watch, and you were just pulling for this kid. You know, he's got a bad wheel, and he's out there and just lets two balls just go right through his arms. Uh, you can't do stuff like that. So, um, but here's the deal. I'm, I just find it hilarious how people are yelling and screaming about this and complaining about the fact that the Rams blew a chance to get into the playoffs. You should be ecstatic, or as they say in Missouri, ecstatic. I mean, we won one game last year, and there hasn't been any good football around here for a long time. And this team came to within one game of making it into the playoffs. You should be absolutely in a state of ecstasy. I started saying this to you in August. I can prove it. You can go back and look at some of the old daily doses. I've been saying this. And I'm going to keep saying it until somebody finally freaking listens to me. And that is, this season, the success of this season, should never have been judged based on the one loss record. It should have been based on how much is the team improving. And you can't find anybody to make a case for the idea that the team hasn't improved tremendously. Steve Spagnolo did his job. He has turned this program around. He's got the guys believing in his system. They came to within a game of getting into the playoffs. The only good that would have come out of this is that next year, when the Rams are going to be a very, very good team, particularly if they can find at least one receiver who can go deep, you know, the Rams will be a real, you know, the Rams will make it into the playoffs next year and may make it deep into the playoffs next year, barring major injuries, particularly to Sam Bradford. 
So, you know, this, this is greed. This is good old American greed. You know, people haven't had any good football around here. They go 1-15 last year. They win some games. They get a good quarterback, a couple of players who are starting to become stars, and right away we're going to go to the Super Bowl. You should be ashamed of yourselves for sort of pointing at Steve Spagnuolo. You blew it. Or Denario Alexander. Give me a break. So, um, you know, and by the way, hey, look, it's a long winter. We've got to get through yet. The Blues went into last night's game with a five-game winning streak, and pitchers and catchers report to Jupiter, Florida in six weeks. See him smiling. There you go. All right. <coughs> the tornado coverage on Friday. We were on the air. I told you on Thursday, I said, this storm is going to hit 11 or 12 right while we're on the air. What happened? I think the tornado hit at something like 11.39 11.46 or something like that, so we were right on it. And uh, thank you to everybody who complimented us on our tornado coverage on the Big 550 KTRS on Friday. So, But you got to get these people on the air again who keep talking about, you know, we're very lucky. We consider ourselves lucky. Standing in front of a house in ruins, oh, we're very lucky. No, the guy who's lucky is the guy who lives a half mile away whose house is perfectly intact and the tornado didn't touch. I, I, I'm just I'm baffled by how people always talk about how lucky they are. And then you got people thanking God and thinking, we're blessed. We're absolutely blessed. Your house is in ruins behind you. You're blessed. So we thank God. You thank God because he sent the tornado but didn't kill you? See, this is the stuff that makes Trish mad. I'm not sure I can bring it up on the air, so I'm talking to you about it right here. What else we got here? Uh, no more smoking in St. Louis County except for a couple of places. And people always say when you quit smoking, you gain weight. And I suppose that's possible. I should tell you that uh, I got on the scale this morning at 179. Okay, I haven't been under 180 pounds in 20 years. I'll tell you how I did it sometime. Okay, but I'd like to. That's good news. Good news is I'm down. I think I had hit 193 sometime earlier last year. So I'm down to 179 now. That's the good news. The bad news. I still need to lose about another 15 pounds. Or if I want to lose like 35 pounds, I can be as skinny as you, man. <laughs> Hi, John. <laughs> All right, what else we got here? Uh, thank God the holidays are over. And we don't have to look at that stupid Channel 5 Cindy Pressler elf promo anymore. Oh, boy. Chuck Berry, everybody's sort of hoping that he's okay. He collapsed on stage like three times. He kept coming back. i got to admire the guy. He's 84 years old, and he keeps coming back saying, no, 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 I'm fine. I'm okay. I just got a little dizzy. Comes back. they got to take him off the stage again. Uh, Chuck, relax. Take it easy. Take a couple of weeks off. You know, and maybe, maybe it's time. You know, maybe it's time. I'm starting to think that maybe it's time for Paul McCartney to just sit down and go, look, I had a great run, but I'm not going to play anymore because I can't sing anymore. He was on Saturday Night Live a couple of weeks ago and was terrible. There's going to be a point at which, you know, there was a point at which even Sinatra, you know, it was really starting to falter in terms of his vocal ability. So happens to everybody, you know. Odd couple of the week, John Mellencamp, who is divorcing his wife after 20 years, uh, seeing hanging around with Meg Ryan. Meg Ryan, the, 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 the tramp, was cheating with uh, Russell Crowe when she was married to Dennis Quaid. Um, we made another dubious national list. No, it's not gonorrhea or puppy mills or the most violent city. We got us an ugly-ass airport. And I'll be the first to agree with that because, you know, um, what was it? It was something like between 1985 and 1999, I took something like 175 trips to Los Angeles and 225 to New York and a bunch of other places, too. I've seen a million airports. And, uh, and St. Louis's airport is, is an ugly-ass airport. Now, originally, a couple of years ago, I think it was three years ago, they said they were going to uh, put $100 million into refurbishing Lambert International Airport. You can't say Lambert Field. If you do, Julius Hunter comes and kicks you in the butt. And he's got a good point, because Lambert Field makes us sound like we're you know, in Wichita, and they cut down some weeds, and there's you know, crop dusting going on. So don't call it Lambert Field. Call it Lambert International. But anyhow, uh, LaGuardia was the number one ugliest airport, followed by JFK, and then St. Louis was third. And you know what? They're right. And what happened to the refurbishing, by the way? Just, you never hear anybody talk about it anymore. Uh, birthdays today include Stephen Stills, of Crosby, Stills, Nash, and sometimes young. He is 66. 
years old today. All right, that's it. Uh, we're just sort of getting things up and running again with the Daily Dose, and we will be here with you every Monday through Friday right here at JC on the Line. Dot com. And as we said, check out those features, eye candy, and a lot of other stuff that's right below us here. You go to the Video Village, the Wayback Machine, got a cool interview with Leslie Nielsen, who just died a couple of weeks ago. So uh, he's, he was a really, really nice man, by the way, and just a lot of fun to be around. All right, so that's it, the Daily Dose for the 3rd of January, 2011, a cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. In the meantime, I will talk to you, by the way, today on the Big 550, and every day, Monday through Friday, from 10 until 1, along with the fabulous Trish. Gazelle. We have Eric Mink on Tuesday. We got the girls on Wednesday. Comedian Joe Marlotti on Thursday. And Smash joins us in the 11 o'clock hour every Friday on the Big 550 KTRS. In the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye. Bye.